Greetings, friends, and welcome back to the channel. And man, I already messed up that uh, R roll, but uh, whatever. Welcome to the Wednesday video, everybody. And today we got a nice, uh, a nice fresh smelling one for you, and that is Talbot and Male Grooming Tangerine. What a scent on this! Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. And um, I noticed a slight difference between this and the aftershave. So I find that the, uh, and I'm just going to grab a brush and we're just going to get right into it here. Uh, we'll talk and we'll, we'll lather. Uh, Coyote Cuts Demented Topper. Favorite brush in the den. 24 millimeter hand tied. Three band silver tip Manchurian knot. This thing is like lathering with a pillow. Absolutely fantastic brush. 130 Canadian for this custom jobby. It's just beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, and 130 Canadian, so what's that? Like 20 American? Something like that? Yeah. Anyway, we'll get into uh, lathering. So um, I noticed this soap has a uh, slightly more tart smell, is what I'm noticing. More of a, uh, more of the pith and the peel smell, and the aftershave splash smells uh, just like a fresh, like a freshly peeled or squeezed a tangerine. So I kind of like that juxtaposition um, between the two of them. I don't know if that's what they were going for, or if that's just what happened because of the the two mediums, where it's the same the same scent in the soap, but. You know the soap changed the scent a little bit as opposed to the medium that the uh the fragrance sits in in the splash but but i mean it works for me so i like it because uh the soap is just a little bit different from the splash so it's like your lat your it's like you're shaving and you have that like that pithy rindy smell and then you uh apply the splash and it's like you've uh peeled through the peel and expose the fruit, and now you're, you're uh, well, just jamming a tangerine in your face. And it smells wonderful. I really don't know how much to load. We're gonna load a little bit more. Load a little bit more. That's probably all kinds. Uh, this is the V2 base. Uh, I believe this, uh, yeah, this would be the V2 because the new base just came out uh, not that long ago, so. So, yes. Put that on the face. Hope everybody's having a wonderful week so far. We have managed to, uh, to make it to hump day, middle of the week. And I was trying to think of a story. I'm trying to think of a story. Because I... It's a fine line with the stories. <laughs> I think. And, um... I don't want to lose subscribers over something that's too raunchy, but I do have some stories that are pretty good and they're kind of raunchy. So I'm going to go with a raunchy one today. Why not? And hopefully everybody that watched the video will stay and enjoy the channel. I'm going to make this as PG-13 as I can. I will try not to curse, try not to use too graphic of, of images. But anyway, here we go. Here's the story as we lather this. And oh, by the way, uh, medium scent strength on this, uh, this soap. We'll get into how I got the soap here in a bit. We'll go through the story first, though. The story won't take that long. So this story is going to be called The Maniacal Masturbator. That's right. So back in the day, early 2000s, uh, when I was trucking the eastern seaboard, there was uh, rumors of a guy that would hang out around the pickle parks on uh, I-395 in Connecticut. Now, pickle park is slang for a rest area where, um, well, well, where people hang out. Let's just put it that way. So what would happen is this guy would uh, pull up beside big trucks as they're driving down the interstate between the two rest areas and uh, and this is always at night, middle of the night and he would pull up beside you and he would turn the dome light on and of course 
in your peripheral vision when you see a car right beside you um, that puts the dome light on your you know your natural instinct is to uh, is to look to see what's going on and then as you look down into the car he'd be doing the five knuckle shuffle for all he was worth <laughs> and let me tell you that's not what you want to see at two o'clock in the morning when you're trucking down the highway. So we've all heard of it and nothing seems to be done about it. So I'm trucking down the highway one night down I-395, middle of the night and the car pulls up beside me and I'm like, oh, could this be him? Sure enough, the dome light comes on. I check it out, and you know, it's the it's the maniacal masturbator. Just having having fun. So, of course, I'm in a big truck. We're gonna put one more application of water into this, and we're gonna shave. So, of course, I'm in a big truck. So I can't uh, I can't get away. I can't really accelerate. And I can slow down, but he's just gonna match my speed. And I'm not in the mood to deal with this. So, me being the nice, the nice Canadian that I am, you know, I'll always give somebody a chance. I, uh, I toot the horn. And, uh, that didn't really seem to do anything to dissuade him. If anything, it spurred him on a bit. So, I tried to slow down a little bit, see if he would, uh, you know, not match my speed. And, uh carry on his married of the way uh no that didn't work so sometimes you got to take control of the situation and i really don't want to be in this situation razor for today a 1954 i don't even know which way this is i don't know if it's up or down uh, a 1954 canadian uh, gillette tech a uh, little short-handled uh, skinny tech with um, brand new Voskhod. And, uh, yeah, we'll go. So, anyway, uh, you got to take control of the situation. I can't speed up because I don't want to get caught for speeding. My truck was wide open at the time. But uh, I didn't want to get pinched for speeding. I slowed down. That didn't seem to work. Oh, it's great soap. Nice, uh, nice slickness, nice protection, all that good stuff. So, I start to ease out over the divided line a little bit. Trying to, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to give him a little scare. I don't, I don't make any sudden movements towards him, but I definitely encroach on his lane a little bit. Just to, uh, just to let him know that I'm not in the mood for games and I want him to leave me alone. So he kind of heads over towards the, the shoulder a little bit. Doesn't stop him. He comes he comes right back. And he's still doing his thing. And I'm like, alright, I gotta get a little bit more I gotta get a little bit more persuasive. So I ease over into his lane a little bit more. I get about half the truck. Half the truck is in his lane. So it forces him over, basically. So he's got a set of wheels on the shoulder. And a set of wheels on the road. <laughs> and that didn't seem to dissuade him. And oh, look at this lather, guys. Oh, it smells so good, too. It smells like that rind. still smells like that rindy tangerine. Um, so that didn't dissuade him any. So we keep going. So we're into it for about 20 miles now. And he just won't leave me alone. So finally, I had enough. I slowly pull over into his lane. And I start slowing down. Because I don't want to do this maneuver at high speed. Um, I don't want to kill anybody, obviously. And maybe this is very unprofessional of me. But what else are you going to do? So I slow down. I get him down to about 45 miles an hour. There's... Nobody behind us, nobody around us. It's the middle of the night. And uh, I ease him all the way over onto the shoulder. 
And then now he's getting a little bit concerned. He, uh, he dropped his, uh, his gear shift and put two hands on the steering wheel. And uh, then I just kept easing him all the way down into the median. <laughs> I fully took his lane and a bit of the shoulder and eased him into the median. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, that's probably mean, and that wasn't very professional. But, you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I don't want to see that shit. Nobody should have to put up with that shit. You can call the cops all you want. They're not going to come out. And even if they do show up, or even if Buddy sees you on the phone, he's not stupid. He's going to take off. Sure, you can get his plate number. They'll never find him. And and so what? If you have his plate number, it's his word against your horse, right? So nothing's gonna happen. So I figured this was the best course of action. Maybe he would get the message to a. Uh, not partake in that type of activity anymore. And lo and behold, after that, I never did hear any more about the, my, my, the maniacal masturbator. So maybe that was uh, maybe that was enough to get him to stop. And I put him in the I put him in the rhubarb gently. He didn't go in hard. He went in nice and easy. So and it was a dry night, so he was able to get his car back up on the road. And then he, uh, I watched him in the mirror. He came back up on the road. And then the next uh, the next turnaround, like for the for the police in the median, he just popped to Yui and went back the other way. So anyway, hopefully he got his hopefully he got the memo. <laughs> anyway, so that's the story. So yeah, I might get a bit of hate for that in the comments, but you know, whatever. What can you do? So on to the soap. Uh, soap performing very, very nicely. Uh, I got this from uh, Nick Simpson, fellow in Canadian wet shavers. And we're going to do the other angle. I've stopped doing the straight up with the DEs. I'm just doing the, the two angles on the neck. It seems to work good. And so I got this from Nick. Uh, Nick reached out to me because he knew I had the splash. And uh, he was asking about the splash and the scent strength. And I'm like, well, I mean, it's, it's kind of strong at first. But then it does die down a bit because, well, it is, it is citrus, right? So citrus isn't overpowering. Because uh, Nick thought the soap was a little on the mild side, which it is, but once again, it's citrus. And uh, Nick likes really strongly scented soap. So he was going to buy the splash. And then he was like, I'll get back to you. So I'm going to go sniff the soap again and make up my mind. Because uh, he was sending me a box of stuff anyway. And uh, anyway, he got back to me that a little bit later and he's like yeah you know what i'll just sell it if you want it so that was 15 bucks sound and i was like sold <laughs> so that's how i got the soap which is great and, uh worked out good for uh for both of us i don't mind a i don't mind a milder soap now and again i do like mine scented fairly strong too but when you're when you're getting into citrus and i'm a i'm a citrus freak you kind of uh you kind of take that on board. You, you kind of know that it's not going to be the, the strongest soap in the world. Uh, great shave, though. Very nice and slick. Just get this one little area here. Very nice, uh, very nice mild razor, these techs. I feel like I might have a bit of irritation over here. Might have had the angle off just a little bit on that pass. Haven't used this razor in a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think that's gonna it's gonna dry down to a nice BBS, I think. All right. So we will go into the uh, go into the cold water rinse in the post. Great, great shave. I used to use a mild razor once in a while. Turn on the milder. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. Most of my DEs are pretty mild. Uh, the fat boy I use on setting number three, the curve, I have a B plate, open comb, safety bar, and uh, the C, open comb and safety bar, so nothing too wild there. 
Nothing too wild there. I did shave yesterday. Sometimes I shave every other day. Sometimes my skin can't tolerate daily shaving and that may be maybe what's going on with the neck down here. A bit of irritation, I think. Other than that, it's good to shave. I could straight razor shave every day though. I find it a little bit easier on the skin than the DEs. Anyway, it is what it is. All right, so not much um, residual scent on that soap. Just a tiny whiff, but I mean, that's okay. We got the matching splash anyway. Give it a good old shake. Male grooming. Tangerine, and this stuff really smells like a tangerine. Yeah, totally different from the soap. This smells just exactly like sweet, fresh, squeezed tangerine juice. It's exactly what it smells like. It's incredible. It's incredible. I, if, if I didn't know any better, I would say this splash is just tangerine juice with some freaking little bit of alcohol in it or whatever Sean puts in his uh, in his splash. Because that's exactly what it smells like. And that's that's really what I like about this set. is I, I like that difference between the soap and the splash. The, the, the soap is a bit rindy. A bit darker, I guess I would say. Not quite as sweet, so pithy, rindy, and then, and then this splash is just sweet and and juicy and vibrant. Very nice, very very nice. At least that's how it is to my nose. So using this set is like an experience to me, um, which I find really really cool. Because I'm a sucker for things like that. Anyway, guys, that was the shave. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed this story. Uh, and that's it for today's video. Um, stay tuned. Saturday we'll uh, we'll have something. I don't know, something new, maybe something old. I don't know. We'll figure it out. It will be a straight razor shave, though. I try and do the DEs on Wednesday, straight razors on Saturday, and uh, we go from there. So anyway, that's it. Uh, thanks everybody for joining these. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you know when the new videos come out. And that's it. So until next time, my friends, be safe, be kind to one another, and as always, have a great day and an even better shave. We'll catch you on Saturday. Peace.